I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. These are two nice chairs. They're part of a set of eight. And the style is from the mid-18th century. You could say Queen Anne style. But these chairs are reproductions. Uh, they're made of mahogany. And my guess is they're probably from the early part of the 20th century. As these chairs fell into disrepair, they were stored. Now we're going to fix these up. This chair is in the worst shape. It needs a new seat. It needs a new rail before the seat. It needs a new spindle down here uh, because the ends have been repaired too many times. This chair is in much better shape. So I think we're going to restore this chair and use that one for parts. In other words, this rail is broken here. I'm hoping I can use that one. And this back splat is missing a section over here. So I may use that back splat. And once they're all repaired and uh, tightened up, they probably just need to be cleaned and waxed. I'm going to start with the uh, parts chair because I'm going to take the seat out and I feel like I'm going to pretty easily be able to get to these parts. The other chair I won't be able to take apart. So I want to make sure I can get these parts before I start working on the other one. Okay, so now I have the pieces that I want. Okay, uh, that was not difficult. So now the question is, can I get this piece, which came from the other chair, in here? Because remember, I'm not taking the seat off. Uh, but before I do that, I know that the back splat from that chair fits this rail, because they came out of there. But I need to make sure that this fits the crest rail. And the dowels certainly look like they line up, but I better try that first.
this one's not coming out. I'm going to cut new dowels. I could just go by the, the length of their dowels, which is one and an eighth, but I'll measure. The existing holes are about three quarters on this piece. That hole's about a half. This one's more like three quarters. So maybe one and an eighth is about right. Now let's see if we can get this in there. Got a ways to go here. I'm going to switch this clamp to the other side so you can see. Boy, I got a ways to go. I want to scrape these tenons. Yeah, good thing I'm checking this. This this one doesn't want to fit in there. It's just the it's just the width of this. I think that'll go in there. Well, I can hear the rush seat starting to complain. Uh, I'll just keep pressing this as far as I can. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll have to trim these tenons a little bit. But I want to avoid that or at least keep it to a minimum. Boy, I'm close. Okay, I'm ready to glue this. And I think here, you know, I can't really see, but I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna squirt some glue in on these tenons too. I mean they have to be separated somewhat at this point. So I'm just gonna squirt some in there and hope that it does some good. I'm using hide glue on this project. This comes pre-mixed, but you have to heat it up. It's good stuff. This chair is a good example of how you do need to take something apart once in a while for repairs. Huh. 
thought it would pop back together. Now I'll put the crest rail on dry just to yeah just to make sure these are in the right position. I think I can go ahead and glue this up. Right. Now we can uh, see if we can glue up these joints. So just like the back section, I've got to see how much I can re-glue, and of course I'm limited by the fact that we're keeping the seat intact. Well, I'm just noticing now, it was not obvious before, but this spindle's been repaired before. There's a dowel drilled into the spindle. It's interesting because the other spindle on the other chair had been repaired also, but there they used such a big dowel that then the, the spindle split. And you can see here where that dowel caused this part to split off also. Well, I just hope that I can, you know, all these joints so I can spread it just enough to get glue on him, on the joints and then bring it back together and hope for the best. That looks good. I think I'll apply some heat to the other side. Get this clamp out of the way. Well, I thought maybe it budged a little bit, but I'm not sure. You know, there may be a nail in there. This, these marks, I realized, are uh, marks from someone trying to get a nail out. And this other one has a nail. I'll try to wiggle it out. Good. I better start marking these things. I'm marking this one too, even though I don't think this spindle is going to come out of there. I'm not even going to try it. What's that? Uh. 
There's so much movement here. I'll try some heat. These side stretchers are good. They're ready to glue. This one seems fine. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do about this uh, big turning. Now this turning, I'm not going to try to get out of there. We have no idea how long these dowels are. Get a pretty good idea here, though. up. You know, all I can do is work as much glue as I can into these joints and clamp it up. There's nothing we can do about these joints right now. Uh, maybe later I'll use a little uh, CA glue or something on them. Uh, we'll see, but all the others with hide glue. Really good, really good. You know, I could let the glue uh, cool off a little bit, you know, cooler temperature, and it would be a little thicker, wouldn't be quite so messy. But especially on a job like this, I feel like the, uh, the heat, the hot glue, will just penetrate better and will help mix better with the uh, old glue. Okay, I'm going to let this dry overnight. The chair seems uh, incredibly sturdy. It's like a rock. So now I'm going to clean the chair. I've noticed on the bottom and other places this whiteness and stuff, which makes me think it might, might be a little bit of mold, like mildew, something like that. So I'm going to clean it with vinegar. Usually I'd mix a solution of like a one part vinegar, two parts water. This is super strong vinegar, it's more concentrated, so I'm going to use like four ounces of vinegar and uh, 
24 ounces of water, something like that. It's not critical. So I'm just going to use a rag and go over it gently. Uh, remember, this is part of a set. I don't want to take off any color at all. I just want to clean the superficial dust and dirt off of it and hopefully get that uh, mold. Now I want to be sure to do the bottom of the seat. Okay, I'm going to uh, let this dry overnight. Okay, this has had plenty of time to dry. So the next step, I'm going to go over it with a scratch cover using steel wool. So a scratch cover, uh, I suppose, is just, I think of it as like a lemon oil polish, but it's got stain in it. And the idea is that the stain won't affect areas with finish but they'll really uh, hopefully help out with all these scratches and abrasions and stuff that you see here. And I'll use steel wool to apply it just to help smooth it out. There's some areas of the chair that are a little rougher and also it helps as an abrasive to clean anything else off the surface. And of course that looks great at first but we won't really know till this dries. Alright, I mean, uh, you can wipe off the scratch cover uh, right away. I'm just going to let this sit here for a while. There's areas that I feel like might benefit from the oil sitting there for a while. And then I'll wipe it off and let it dry. Alright, this looks good. I actually ended up letting this uh, sit here overnight, but uh, seems fine. I'm going to wipe this down <clears throat> with a clean uh, paper shop towel. Getting off all the excess. Boy, this old uh, old finish has really responded well to the uh, scratch cover, and uh, it looks great. Uh, I'm still going to go over it. Uh, I just feel like no repair job would be complete without going over it with the uh, beeswax polish. I'm going to do that real quick.
All right. Now I'll go over it with this rag. This is a rag that I use for polishing for years. It's saturated with the oil polish. And I'm just going over it to pick up any excess and even it out a bit. Now, I'll let this uh, polish dry uh, for about an hour while I go eat lunch. Okay, I can uh, just buff it down now. Well, there you go. This is a really nice uh, reproduction side chair. Uh, it's one of a set. It uh, came in in really rough condition, but uh, boy, the finish just responded so well to the scratch cover and the uh, beeswax polish. And if you remember, uh, I used the old parts chair and put in a new cross piece here and the new, new back splat because it was broken. And I managed to, uh, you know, get this apart enough where I've glued it but we managed to keep the old rush seat. I think it looks pretty good.